Hi, Leslie and Easton. Hope you guys are having a great day today. This is your video lesson. Uh, five things I want to talk about. I'll go down that list, and as usual, if you have questions at the end of what you're looking at, feel free to shoot a message on over, and I'll do my best to answer. So cool. Let's get to it. So first thing is, um, oh good. Thanks for seeing those videos over. It's super helpful for me to see what's going on. So I appreciate that you guys send those over to me. Um, that way, I can make like more, you know, more specific comments. Uh, first thing is the Bakhtans prep. Looking really good. Um, I like it. I had in my notes that I just had you do the right hand, but we see I had the left hand in there too, so everything's looking good. Um, very nice. It says M I A M I. Wait, that more time. I'm snap a note. M I A M I. Right, that looks good. I think you can increase the tempo a little bit. So what I would do is do M I A M I, and then maybe do like a slow one first, like M I A M I, and then when we're up to speed, M I A M I. Um, technically speaking, um. It's kind of like, I think the way he's doing, he's kind of moving. And then he's kind of buzzing the note a little bit right there. It says caused by is because he's not abducting his arm when he's moving away. It's kind of like everything's staying stationary like is this. So here we're kind of in a horizontal hand position, right? Because we're playing. We're playing scales and stuff, right? So we're playing that kind of stuff. You know, our hands can be more like this way. But when we're playing in this position where our chords, our hands can be out a little bit more. Or sorry, rotated out a little bit more towards the thumb side, right? So we have to make, uh, compensate that when we do the exercise. So here we're horizontal with the guitar. M, I, A, M, I. And if you do, if you turn the handle a little bit and you rotate, you abduct the arm out a little bit and rotate the forearm uh, towards the thumb side of the hand right here. I have much easier time getting that first finger placed right there on the on the note A on the third string. Because if I do this, I run the risk of because I because you know there in the buzzy tone. <clears throat> and so that's caused by the string um, not making full contact with the fret wire, and that's what's causing that buzz. So one more time. M I A M I. You notice what I did? I rotated my forearm, I abducted my arm away from my body like this right here, and then I was able to get that pointer finger in there much easier. Do that for me. Um, and then number two, D scale plus the perfect fifth above. That looks great. It looks really nice. Um, those added notes are coming in very nice, so I like what I'm hearing. Right, all that looks great right there. What I would like to see is him just name the notes while he plays. Um, that way when we transition more over to note reading, um, he'll know what all those notes are called. That way he'll know the spot on the the sheet music and go, oh, that's what I have to play over here. So D, E, if you don't haven't done it already, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, right? And then do it backwards. A, G, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp. Next thing is, like I said, the details looking great though. Brother John, um, cool. Uh, let's see here. So uh, this is usually a question I ask. If, I know if someone's, I know you're listening to the music, um, but if someone's listening to the recording, how many times do they repeat Brother John on the recording for the canon? And I'll see if you have an answer for me next time. What I'd also like to, I'm not sure if you've done this before with him, Leslie, is um, how about how about have him play the melody and see if you can play the canon behind him or the round behind him. Uh, so um, you know how that works. So let's see if next time you can, he can play the um, play Brother John and then have you kind of accompany him or do the second part and see if he can keep his part going. That'd be kind of neat to see if he could do that. Um, in there towards the end, the, um, uh, the he did. That is absolutely the right note. That is, a, that is the note, oh, sorry. So that is the right note right there. So the so mo traditionally students will play that open, open D, open E, open D. But if he's having a if he's getting it already, you know why not, right? He's already got a good pinky pinky uh, pinky technique. So you know, like why not? So I'll let you guys decide on which way we do it. I'd say, you know, you know, with my teachers, it was always like, do both ways and then see which way you like the best. 
right? So don't just make a decision, oh, I can't do that, so therefore I'm not gonna do that one. Be able to do both and then make an informed decision on which one you'd like to do. And then um, in the another thing you can add in the in the challenge section is this. It's like, forte piano in there no tasto yet you have to prove to me you can play that rosette position and then and only then in in we'll do we'll be on, on probation you won't be a tasto jail you'll be on tasto probation i'll slowly give you more tostos and see if we can introduce that back into your playing do that for me and then number four uh thumb and fingers um we haven't done this for a while and according to my notes um it has been too long since we did our thumb. We did it on 622, so it's been over a month since we've done our thumb and fingers exercise. So let's bring that back out. Um, so as you can notice from 622, um, that's this technique right here. So thumb, or sorry, index on the B string, thumb, middle, thumb. I was like, index, thumb, middle, thumb, index, thumb. Now what we want to do with this is make sure that we are doing rest strokes here. Sometimes the kids will want to start doing this, right? Rest stroke, that's where we're resting on the string behind. Rest stroke, thumb. And the thumb is passing through and connecting, making a little cross with your pointer finger. So it's not doing this. Let's see if I can play it wrong. See, I'm resting on the thumb on the fourth string. It's not that. Index rests on the third string. Thumb passes through and meets the, the tip joint, the first flange of the, of the pointer finger. Karate chops. And what's the glue that's holding it together is that is that rest stroke right there. Awesome. So do that for me. And if everything looks good with that, well, what we'll do next is we'll combine the D scale starting on the second string. So like you're going right there. prep for um, the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, steady hands. And then lastly, last thing to work on this week is start listening to the fermentons. Um, I don't want to give you any notes of that. You can start listening to it. Um, that way when we start working on it next week, you'll know how it goes. And then we will do a nice coast into the end of book one. And then, you know, I bet by Christmas time, easily, easily by Christmas time, um, we'll, uh, we'll be moving into book two. So Cool, great look, guys. Um, so awesome, so do that for me. Like I said, if you want to look at anything, feel free to shoot on over. If not, I will catch you same time next time. Take care.